After you run one of the Puget Bench benchmarks, the results are uploaded into our database and you are shown this page. Now there's a lot of detailed information here and it can be a bit overwhelming. So what we're gonna do is break it down section by section. At the very top of the page, you'll find the benchmark group for this result. Now we group benchmarks and application versions together to ensure comparisons are made between results with the same testing conditions. For example, this result is comparable to other results using Puget Bench for Premiere Pro 1.0 through 1.1.1 and for Premiere Pro 25.1 through 25.2. Now these versions of Premiere Pro are in a separate group from older versions because they have a change in how Premiere chooses which hardware decoding device to use by default, and that can impact the results for some of the tests. Below this, we have the primary benchmark scores for this profile. Depending on the benchmark and which preset was used, there can be anywhere from one to three primary scores. Next is basic information about the system. At the top is the specific version of the host application and benchmark. In this case, Premiere Pro 25.1 and the 1.1.1 version of our benchmark. It also has basic information on the system's CPU and GPU. You can also click on the Show Full Details button if you want more detailed information on the system specifications. This can be very useful if you want to work out why a result may be giving lower or higher performance than expected. It's important to remember that some factors, like overclocking, power profiles, or thermal throttling, aren't detected automatically, so the displayed specs may not show everything that could affect performance. Following that, this is where things start to get really interesting. This section shows how the results for this profile compare to a number of modern workstation configurations. Now this list is by no means exhaustive, but it is hand curated to show how much of a return on investment you might see if you were to purchase a new modern workstation. You can change which scores you are most interested in with the dropdown. For example, if you do a lot of work with raw media, you might want to base your purchasing decisions on the raw score rather than the overall score. This can be very important at times because the type of workload can dramatically change how different types of systems perform. Each of these bars is a link. If it is a configuration we offer here at Puget Systems, then it goes right to the most relevant configuration page of ours, where you can adjust the specs of the system to match your needs. If it is not something we offer, like an Apple MacBook, then the link takes you to the most relevant page to purchase that kind of system. Next up, we have a section dedicated to showing how this result compares to others in our database in the same benchmark and application group. This is very useful to help determine if your system is performing as it should be. Now it's important to note that this section is not looking at the same combination of CPU and GPU as the uploaded system, but rather just the individual CPU and GPU. This is one of the most powerful tools our benchmark pages provide because it lets you track down where your system might be underperforming and gives clues as to why. Let's take a closer look at this example. We have a system with a 5950X CPU and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti graphics card. Now at first glance, this result looks great. The CPU is within the margin of error, about 3% above average, and the GPU is only slightly outside the margin of error at 6% below the average, but it is right at one of the peaks that is typical for this graphics card. But we can dig in a little bit deeper to see if there's anything odd going on. For example, let's take a look at the intro frame score. Now this is a CPU based test that does not really take the GPU into account much. And in this case, the CPU is actually 8% above average, right at one of the peaks that's typical for this processor. So that again, looks terrific. We can also look at the GPU effect score, which is similar, but for the graphics card. And in this case, we're only 1% below the average, basically the same, and we're right in between two typical peaks for this graphics card. Now, the last thing we wanna look at here is actually the long GOP score. This is the test for H.264 and HEPC codecs. Now this one is interesting because both the CPU and GPU are well under the norm for this processor and graphics card. So there is something going on here. And what we can do is we can actually scroll down this page a little bit and look at all of the individual test results. And in this case, there's one test that stands out, the encoding H.264 test. In this case, we're only getting about 17.5 FPS when the typical for the CPU is almost 135 FPS and for the graphics card is about 125 FPS. Now, this could be caused by a whole host of different things. It could just be a fluke, you know, a random Windows update is running, something running in the background that's taking up processing power. So the first thing whenever you have a low result like this is to simply run the benchmark a second time and see if there's anything different. If it is still the same low result, then it'd be time to start looking at things like your graphics drivers, uh, your software installs, maybe clearing your preferences, because there is something wrong that is causing the system to underperform for this one test. Finally, we have the last section, which simply lists out recent benchmark uploads for the matching CPU and GPU. 
This is great to give a look and use to dig into other results if you want to figure out why a specific upload might be giving a higher or lower result than this profile. If you want to download and run the benchmark on your own system, you can go to the main Puget Bench for Creators page, go down to the download section, and download for either Windows or Mac OS. With Puget Bench, you can run benchmarks on Premiere Pro, Photoshop, After Effects, and DaVinci Resolve to see how your own system performs.